which um, I made up for you guys and had online. Um, this shouldn't take too long, but if you need it to slow down because I'm going too fast, you can just um, put it on repeat and rewind. Okay. So the first question, if the pressure of a gas is reduced, what will happen to the volume of the gas? Now, remember this is Boyle's Law, so when um, your pressure is decreased, Remember, this is an inverse relationship. So if pressure is going to be decreased, your volume is therefore going to be increased. All right, so the volume will increase A. Okay, um, next thing. Um, what happens to the pressure of a gas inside a container if the temperature of the gas increases? So if temperature increases, now we have to think about which law this is really quickly. So temperature is increasing. So this is the relationship between temperature and pressure. This is Gay-Lussac's law. So remember, it's P over T, which is a direct relationship because if T increases, in order for this not to change, pressure has to also increase. So pressure is also going to increase. Okay. The formula for Boyle's Law was P times V, which means if pressure decreases, volume has to increase for this not to change. For this one, since it's P over T, if temperature increases, pressure has to also increase for this entire thing not to change. So my pressure is going to increase A. Cool. If three moles of a gas are added to a container that already holds one mole of gas, how will the pressure change inside the container? Well, we are using the... Um, we are using the ideal gas law, so PV equals NRT. RT. And specifically what we're doing is we're looking at the relationship between pressure and number of moles. So I started with one mole, and then it increased by three, which means it went from one to four. So if this increases, this is also going to have to increase. This is a direct relationship right here. So the pressure is going to have to go up four times. So the answer is B. All right. Under what conditions of temperature and pressure is the behavior of real gases most like that of ideal gases? The, guys, we had gone over this in class. It's high temperature and low pressure. And I can explain it really quickly. Um, real gases. Real gases are actually attracted to each other. When we're talking about ideal gases, we're assuming that they're not attracted to each other. So for real gases to act sort of like ideal gases, the best conditions for that are low pressure and high temperature because they are least attracted to each other in those conditions. All right? All right, identify the following laws. P1, V1, that's boils. Okay. That's Boyle's law. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's Charles. I'm just going to write Charles. Okay. P1 over T1, we just went over that one right here. That's Gay-Lussac, so Gay-Lussac's law. PV equals NRT, that is your ideal gas law. Ideal gas law. There you go. All right, now we're going to get into some of the math of the unit. The volume of a gas is 450 milliliters at 350 kPa pressure. What will the volume be if the pressure is reduced to 60 kPa? All right, and our temperature is remaining constant. Guys, the only time that you're having to convert to liters, kPa, and um, right, having those two specific units is when we're using our ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. Otherwise, because our R, and we'll get there in a second, is um, in terms of kPa, liters, moles, and Kelvin. Otherwise, for all the other problems we're going to be dealing with, with Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, Gay-Lussac's Law, Combined Gas Law, all of those problems, the only units you have to be in and you have to convert to are Kelvin. Otherwise, you can use milliliters, you can use atmospheres, you can use millimeters of mercury, whatever floats your boat. Okay, So I'm going to keep these units because I don't like converting when I don't have to and wasting time. So in this problem, I have... Um, I'm comparing volume and pressure. So I'm going to be using Boyle's Law. And you'll get Boyle's Law on your final. So all you have to do is say, okay, 350 times 450 equals, now I've changed my pressure, and my pressure is going to be 60 times the new volume. And that's what it's asking. It says, what will the new volume be? So now I'm going to take out my calculator because I haven't done any of these prior. Want to do them with you, and you do 350 times 450, 
And then to isolate V, what you have to do is divide both sides by 60. So divide by 60, and I get 2,625. And there's my answer right there. The answer is D. Awesome. Okay, next one, number 10. A gas has a volume of 480 milliliters at a temperature of negative 35 degrees Celsius. What volume will the gas occupy at 60 degrees Celsius? Notice we're not talking about pressure. All we're saying is, okay, here's my initial volume. Here's my initial temperature. How does my volume change if I change the temperature? So I'm just using Charles' law. I'm not including pressure at all. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, it starts out at 480. That's the initial volume. Sorry, one sec. My pen went crazy. So 480 divided by, now, here's the thing, and here's the problem. I have to be in Kelvin. This is negative 35 degrees Celsius, right? I can't put that in the bottom. You'll get the wrong answer. So don't let me trick you with multiple choice with that. So you have to do negative 35. Remember to convert from Kelvin um, to Celsius, from Celsius to Kelvin, you have to add 273 and that's it. So plus 273, that's 238. Guys, I'm not actually going to give you that conversion on the test. I figure at this point you guys can do that without me giving you that one conversion factor. Okay. Um, then what it, will the volume be? So this is the new volume, V2 over now 60 degrees 60 plus 273 that's 333 alrighty awesome so now what I want to do I want to solve for V2 so here's the math that you need to do I need to do 480 times 333 okay and so when you do 480 times 333 you get one, um, 159,840 and I'm going to do this once guys showing my math and then I'm not going to do it again because I'm going to assume you guys know how to do this Okay, equals 238 times my V. So now to isolate V, I'm just going to divide both sides by 238, and I get 671.6 if I round it, and that's answer A, and I'm done. Okay, 11, a balloon has a volume of 28 liters at a pressure of 30 kPa and a temperature. Okay, so I'm given pressure, um, volume, and temperature. Okay, what will the volume be if I change the temperature and the pressure? So here, guys, I have a combined gas law. I have pressure, I've got temperature, and I've got volume. So I need my P, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Remember, the only thing I have to convert in this problem, guys, is to Kelvin. Otherwise, I can keep everything else the same. So I'm going to do that. 30 is my initial pressure times 28 is my initial volume, all over 25 is my initial um, temperature. So 25 plus 273 is 298. All righty. Equals, um, my new pressure is 15. My new volume I'm trying to find, so I'm going to put V2 here. Okay. And then it's 60 plus 273, because I have to be in Kelvin, 333. Now, Here's what you need to do. Multiply these things and then set them equal to 15 times V2 times 298. Then you're going to divide both sides by the 15 times 298. Okay, so I get 30 times 28 times 333 and I get two, um, sorry, 279,720. Okay, then I'm going to divide that by the 15 times 298. And remember guys, I would divide by 15 and then divide by 298, or do 15 times 298 and then divide by that, okay? And I get 62.6. Guys, if you're not being able to get that answer, even though you have that set up, you need to come in and get help, because that's really crucial that you are able to do that for the final, okay? All right, what volume does 56 grams occupy at 65 kPa and 25 degrees Celsius? Here's the thing, guys. I give you an R. I'm telling you grams, and notice I'm not changing any conditions. For all the other gas laws, I change conditions. So in this one, guys, this is an ideal gas law problem. I'm not changing any conditions. I don't have a P1, P2 on the other side. So I know that I need to use PV equals NRT, my PIVNERT. Now, I know my, let's see, pressure. I don't know my volume. That's what it's asking for. I know my R, and I know my T. I don't know my N. But I do because it gives it to me in grams. 
56 grams. So I need to convert 56 grams of N2 into moles. I'm going to crisscross swoosh. You put grams on bottom, moles up top. One on top. Remember, it's N2, not just N, so that's 28. So in fact, guys, really easily, I find that I have two moles. Okay, so I'm going to plug in all my numbers. Here's where it matters. Here's where um, your units matter. Notice for your R, which I will always give to you, your pressure has to be in kPa, your volume has to be in liters, your temperature has to be in Kelvin, and your moles have to be in moles. Okay, so when you're plugging in numbers, guys, make sure that, that that's the case or else you'll have to convert. So 65 is in kPa, so I'm good with that. I want to find my volume, so I'm going to multiply that by V. I know I have two moles, which are the units I want. I know my R is 8.31. My temperature is in degrees Celsius, and I want it in Kelvin. So 225 plus 273 is 298. Alrighty then. So I'm going to take 2 times 8.31 times 298, and then divide that by 65 to get my V, and I get 76.2. I get A. Okay. All right, I go on a hiking trip with an inflated beach ball. I start at sea level where the pressure is one atmosphere, that's my P1, and a temperature at 23 degrees Celsius. The volume of the ball is that. Okay, so I give you three different things. You should automatically be thinking my combined gas law. Um, I then hike up the mountain, so I'm changing my altitude. You should automatically be thinking since I'm going up higher. This isn't to trick you. This is just to tell you, keep in mind, my pressure is going to go down. My atmospheric pressure decreases to 0.6 atmospheres, and the temperature decreases to 15 degrees Celsius. What's my new volume? So I'm just using this again, guys. Remember, I don't have to convert to anything except for with Kelvin, so I'm just going to plug in my numbers using this formula right here. I've got one atmosphere for my initial pressure. My initial volume is 50. For my initial temperature, I do have to convert that to Kelvin. So it's 23 plus 273, 296. Awesome. Equals. Now, I know my um, new pressure, it says 0.6 atmospheres. So that's my new pressure. I want to know the new volume of my beach ball. So I'm going to leave that blank. And then the new temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, which makes sense because if you decrease pressure, you decrease temperature. So that's why it gets really, really cold when you get higher up in the mountain because pressure decreases. So 15 plus 273, 288. So I'm going to do the same math as what I did before. Okay, 288 times 50 times 1. Okay, and I get 14,400 equals 296 times 0.6. So 177.6 times V, so I need to divide both sides by the 177.6, so by 177.6, and I got 81 moles, approximately. Oh, that's not what it's asking about. Sorry, wrong problem, 81 milliliters. Woo, sorry, I skipped ahead. So 81 milliliters is my new volume, okay? Which makes sense, because it, um, it should be expanding and it does because it started at a volume of 50 mils. Okay, next one. How many moles of gas are there when a balloon has a volume of 50 mils, 15 degrees Celsius, and two atmospheres? Remember guys, I'm not changing anything here. So if your conditions aren't changing at all, you're not using any of these, sorry, any of these gas laws, you're using your Pivner. So remember for Pivner, these are the units that I need. So for PV equals NRT, I'm going to plug in all my numbers, but first I need to recognize the fact that for pressure, I need to be in kPa, and right now I'm in atmospheres. So I need to go from two atmospheres, and I need to convert into kPa. So crisscross swoosh, they're 101.3 um, kPa in one atmosphere, and so two times 101.3, you get 202.6. So that's my number of kPa, 202.6 is my pressure, okay? My volume is in milliliters. I want it in liters, so I'm going to divide by 1,000 to get it into liters. Equals N is what I'm trying to solve for, times 8.31. And then my temperature, guys, right now is in Celsius, but I want it in Kelvin. So I'm going to add 273, and I get 288. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is do 202.6 times 0.5 divided by 8.31 divided by 288 and I get 0.04. That's my answer, D. Okay. Next one, 17, a mixture of gas has a total pressure. So this is your um, 
Um, my brain is going, Dalton's law of partial pressure. Sorry, my brain went blank for a second. So total pressure is the sum of your partial pressure. So 115 equals the sum of all my other partial pressures. So one partial pressure is 100. The other one is 2.2. That's a plus sign, sorry. Plus 0.08. Okay, so 115 minus 100 minus 2.2 minus 0.08 and I get 12.72, and that's A. Awesome. Using Graham's Law, calculate how much faster HE diffuses than Cl2. All right, so I'm gonna put HE on top. So it's gonna be HE over Cl2, the rate of HE over the rate of Cl2. Okay, equals, and remember, you're gonna take the square root, and that's gonna be the invert, you're gonna flip the molar masses. Okay, so the mass of Cl2, so it's 35.5 times 2, because there are two Cl, so it's 71, over 4, which is the um, molecular mass of helium. So 71 divided by 4, the square root of that answer is 4.2. Now, here's the thing. If you would have done it the other way, so I got C, if you would have done Cl2 on top, it makes no sense to say that this isn't what the question is asking. It's not saying that Cl2 is 0.24 times faster or 0.36, whatever you get times faster, right? It's saying how much faster is HE. So you want to put whichever one it's asking how much faster it is on top because you would say it's 0.24 times slower. Cl2 would be 0.24 times slower, not 0.24 times faster. Okay, just a little bit of semantics. Last one, the initial pressure of a gas is 0.25 at 50 degrees Celsius. What is the new pressure? Okay, so the only thing I'm doing here, guys, I'm changing my pressure and my temperature. So it's going to be your Gay-Lussac's law. So I'm going to have 2.5 on top because that's my initial pressure. My initial temperature is 50, so it's going to be 50 um, plus 273, so it's 323. My new pressure is, I don't know, so I'm going to put P2 on top. And then um, 60 plus 273 is 333. Okay, so I'm going to cross multiply. So 2.5 times 333, and then divide that by 323, and I get 2.6 atmospheres. Notice I didn't need to convert my pressure. The only thing for these... I, is that I need to convert to Kelvin. The only time you need to convert everything into specific units is for your ideal gas law. And those are all the problems for unit 11, guys.